Hey gang, it's your pal Rob again, and welcome back to the playground. I'm back with part one of a two-part series, and it's a doozy. The piece we're about to explore took me about 100 hours to finish, and it's also the largest canvas piece I've ever completed. Once again, we're exploring the concept of quantum entanglement, but since I've missed including figures in my work as of late, I've included a figure in there as well. Now, before we jump in, I just want to let you know that I'm back into apparel design. I'm currently wearing one of my new t-shirts. <laughs> so, please to be checking that out on the shop. Also, per usual, please make the YouTube gods happy by liking and commenting on this video, subscribing to the channel, and also feel free to follow my other social medias. Alrighty, I'm excited to dive into this one, so let's grab our brushes. Pull any masking tape and get to painting. Come on. For this piece, I'd like to show you some behind the scenes prep. Even though my work is abstract, I often create a visual guide in Photoshop that not only helps me with the overall look and feel of the piece, but provides me with measuring points so I know where to mask certain areas and the like. You're all familiar with this part. When stretching the canvas, always begin by attaching the middle of each side and working your way outward. Life is too short for sad, saggy canvases. I nip in those corners with two crisp 45 degree angle folds. Now we're ready for some prime time. Five layers with sanding in between should do it. Moving to a direct overhead view, you can get a sense of the size of this bad boy. To be honest, I was nervous at the beginning of this piece, and in the back of my mind I was wondering if my art mouth was larger than my art stomach. Well, no turning back, so let's get some layers of darker color built. I generally like working dark to light, so I apply a few thin layers of a violet, burnt umber, and black mixture. I continue with this color, but proceed to use droplets of paint rather than using a brush to smooth it. You know I love building texture this way. I then use a makeshift cardboard compass to trace a circular shape and mask it off with tape and latex. This is where the main body of our figure will exist. You'll see that develop over time. Once the mask is dry, I begin filling the shape with a thin combination of cobalt and cerulean blue. I lay down a couple of thin layers, then proceed with dropping in some light blue permanent and more cerulean blue. Yes, the paint is quite thin, so the difference from layer to layer may not be all that noticeable, but again, patience is key with this technique. I move to a combination of violet and light blue, and also combine some magenta as well. Can you see the color building? It certainly takes time. I'm going to start adding some lighter shades, and continue with light blue and a magenta that has a touch of light orange. From there, I use some pink and yellow, and continue layering the light blue around them. Alrighty, let's measure and mask off a new section, where I'll introduce more colors. I'm using a combination of magenta and violet here, followed by some deep cadmium yellow. Again, the paint is very thin, 
which will make for some nice textured areas. You'll begin to see why I'm sort of directing where the paint ends up in due time, as I will mask off another section that will be yellowish in color. I drop one final layer of these purple and yellow hues, then remove this mask section. Time to continue my masking tape lifestyle. The green tape is a different brand than the blue tape, and I feel like it does a better job with edges when the paint is thin. I begin to utilize some lighter colors now. A bit of yellow, a touch of white. This will provide some contrast in the piece before the figure, and yep, planets are added. This wouldn't be a space painting without planets, right? For the first time in this piece, I use a straw to move the paint in a flourished manner. I love how organic the paint looks when I do this. I roughly drop some heavily contrasting light and dark values here, cleaning up some areas with a wet paper towel. I mask off a small section here in preparation for some cool Aurora textures to come. I roughly combine some blue and white paint, then snake it onto the piece. Using a dry, soft brush, I gently draw the paint outward to create a celestial lighting effect accented by some additional twinkles of white. I use this often in this piece, as you will see. I switch to magenta and white, repeating this Aurora Borealis look and feel, followed by a combination of yellow and white. This spacecape is really starting to spread its wings a bit. I mask off another small section, then huzzah. I create a space for a planet pal to live. Careful, careful around the edges. Let's add more lighting effects, shall we? I start to develop the background around our planetary shape. This will help define it and create some contrast. I apply some paint on top of the mask and blow it outward for more of those neat organic flourishes. I mask off more of the piece and add even more auroras with magenta, yellow, and white. I use a thicker, more intense yellow now, and again, blow the paint outward. With a thinner masking tape, I roughly apply it in a few sections. This simply creates more shapes reaching off of our planet. I repeat this process a couple more times, adding some magenta into the mix.
let's remove these masks and take a look at the progress so far. Ooh wee, there's quite a bit going on here. At this point, I'm happy with the depth that's been created. In the next video, I begin work on our human form and add a couple of planets in the piece as well. That'll do it for this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can also support my Patreon and other forms of social media, Rob's Mental Playground, on those. Prints of these pieces, as well as others, can be found at shop.robsmentalplayground.com. Thank you so much for watching, and please, be kind to each other.